All right, y'all, what's going on? Today we are finally picking up the motor for the 65 Stingray. We got the call from the engine builder two days ago, and he said, hey, the motor's ready. He sent us pictures. We're like, all right, cool, let's go pick it up. So we had to plan on when we were gonna make that work. Today's the day. So I'm super excited, as you probably already know. And right now, I just gotta grab some ratchet straps. That way we can ratchet strap the motor down in the bed of the truck. And of course, we have a parking lot full of cars so i got to move this thing and then i got to back out the block truck because we're taking the 2500 to go pick up the motor so let's do it okay now i gotta grab these straps making sure i have them all in there yes 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 perfect like i said i'm bringing these even though they're giving us an engine stand um we still need these straps maybe just in case we'll definitely we don't want this thing sliding around back there only other thing that i have to grab is a trash bag to cover the motor when you're driving make sure you guys always do that if you pick one up especially if it's obviously exposed that there's no valve covers on it and stuff so gotta grab a trash bag and then we're going to hope that there is fuel in the truck and if not we gotta go get gas you know we can't leave without a fresh lacrosse on the road so we gotta grab this now now we're ready to go and we're in the black truck and why am i not surprised low fuel i guess that's what happens when you drive something that gets i don't know five miles per gallon <laughs> all right time to go get fuel oh man never ending okay we did not full fill because that place was expensive but we got like a half tank which is enough to get there i'm now about to go pick up my grandpa because he's coming with us after that we're gonna drive straight there i don't know if i'm gonna be vlogging on the way there especially because i'm with my grandpa so we're gonna be talking and whatever but yeah let's go get this motor man i am so stoked i can't wait let's get it picking up the motor be out here lnr custom engine building 100 bucks yeah, yeah. 100 right. bucks back then you know how much I can charge to rebuild this? Oh, you're gonna charge <laughs> About $7,500. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what that's what they go for. Amazing. Yep. Model T. That's pretty cool. So we do everything from the old, old <laughs> stuff to the new awesome. stuff. Awesome. I got Hellcat engines in here right now. There we go. This is crazy. Uh, Eight valves for how, what do you see about those Garrett. things as far as like holding power? Hey, how are you? Good to meet you. Um, how are those Hellcat motors? Longevity wise, they're, they're actually every every motor, every Ford, Chevy, they all got their little problems. They got uh, yeah. Go through that doorway, uh, make a quick right, first left. There's two bathrooms either. But the problem with the the, the the Dodge Mopar Chrysler, the pistons they they pop off the top. Sometimes they detonate the top of the pistons because the way they're made, the top ring, there's not a lot of meat there. But huh. other than that, I mean, I mean, I've always been like kind of a, well, I'm not prejudiced, but I've been kind of like a Ford guy all my life. And uh -huh. you know, I'm getting at the age now where I said, I told my wife, I'm buying a GT350 Cobra. There but we go. My, my youngest son, he got a, a, a Dodge Charger RT, 5.7 Hemi. So I started driving that, and I got like that. <laughs> I like that, so I went and bought a scat pack. So there I got, you go. I got a heavy 392 scat, <laughs> brand new 2020, you know? Nice. Right. And I go, shit, I'm, I've never been a Chrysler guy, but the car, the, those are so heavy cars, you know, I feel good right. in it. Oh, right, right. I'm going to raise this up. Sure, I like this thing. <laughs> I would too. There she is. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure you're not going to Okay, okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's the ones I wanted to show you, and the reason I couldn't have them is because they're here. Yeah. It's crazy how tiny they are. I know, right? When they're out without any of the accessories on it. Her all loaded up. There she is. You can't really see her fully because she's all covered up. We got the essentials here. We got the straps, and we got we got the strap. A Lacroix, of course. I I need another one. Please. These Please. are those valve covers I wanted to show you guys. These are the ones though. See, they got these. They say Corvette on them. They're clean. A baller.
30 over. So first cut. Yeah. I got you a virgin box and it's never been machined, so Pretty cool. I like old school yeah. shots, too. Okay. Motors, please, please. These are a bunch of all his, I guess, stuff that he's going to be rebuilding and stuff. It's an old Cobra motor, or at well, least valve covers. That's Ford. Yeah, that's to tell you about the color. Yep. Blocks on blocks on that blocks on straight. blocks. This is all four banger? Dude, is he doing Honda installs? Dude, look at all these crates. Dude, dude. Honda motor too. Look at all They've this. Been here for a minute. Oh yeah. Cam kit. That's a big cam. That is. Use that. Just, yeah. Please. Do a little Please. Bending. All these cranks. Jeez. Look at all those cranks. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Literally stuff everywhere. I'm not filming too much inside just because of like, I don't know privacy and COVID, like, I don't know how oh they feel about it. It doesn't look like they care, God. but I don't know. I talked to them, though. They're really cool guys. Coming home, and we were unwrapping her for the first time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. These heads are so this, nice. They're going to have to take that off. AFR heads. Where's that, where's that build sheet inside? Yeah, it's in the... 383 stroker is the motor. So that is why... This is the, that's You guys were guessing LS and stuff. I put it on YouTube and had people guess what they thought it was going to be. And everyone thought we were putting an LS in it. Uh -huh. But yeah, 383 stroker here. piece. Beautiful motor, man. This manifold looks so clean. All right, everybody, we are back in the garage and we finally got the motor onto the stand. So that way we are able to, I mean, it's kind of where we wanted it. So at least we're able to look at everything, kind of start building our plan on what we're doing with the Corvette on taking the 327 out and getting this thing thrown back in there. Now that she's on the stand, I'll kind of show you guys. So you can just see it a lot better. There's still all the plastic wrap on there because we're not putting it in for probably another two weeks at least still because we got to work on taking the old one out and prepping the engine bay and all the stuff we want to do on there. But I just thought I would show you guys the motor while it's sitting on the stand. Really, really nice. I'll, I'll grab the build sheet in a minute too. And if anybody cares to pause it while I show that, you guys can check out exactly what the cam specs and all the things are on the motor if I haven't shown that already. But this is her, she's on the stand. And let's go over to the Corvette now. And in case anyone's curious, these are all the specs on the motor. So you can go ahead and pause that if you want to check it out. All the bore, the stroke, everything. It's easier than just saying it. Here's all the cam specs. So that's the whole spec sheet for the motor. Just thought I'd let you guys know about that. I'm sure someone out there is curious. All right, so now we're over here with the Corvette and I was just kind of getting over here to talk since we're gonna be talking about it anyway, but the plan is to slowly start. So by Saturday, we wanna have the motor coming out of the car. So that's the goal. By Saturday, we want the motor coming out, and we're not just going to toss the the new the 383 back in. I don't know if I said it, by the way. I'm sure I did, but 383 stroker, that's what the motor is. And we don't want to just toss it right in. We could do that. It would be pretty fast. You'd be on the road pretty quick, but we want to take our time with it and kind of do what we did on the Bel Air, which is fully sano the inside. Uh, paint the inside get the accessories chromed everything so that way I mean we're trying to make the thing look good not just toss the motor in there and put all the old accessories on but you know some stuff we're gonna have to do that with anyways we're gonna have to toss the old accessories on or something that we can't figure out to make something custom but for the most part we try to make it as clean as we can so you know we just have different plans and as we're going through with the, the build we're gonna do more and more I'm sure but we're gonna look into maybe getting the special alternator or stuff like that. Like if you look at the Bel Air, she's really tight in here, but let's see if I can show you. So as you can see with like the Bel Air, we tried our best to, you know, painted the whole firewall, got everything clean, chromed out uh, chrome alternator, like got all the accessories looking good. And that way, when you pop the hood, you know, you can tell that the, it just fits the rest of the car. That's kind of our goal here with this thing. And I'm, I'm just super, super excited. 
What I'm also super excited about is obviously this motor is coming out and this is a perfectly good motor. So we got to do something with it obviously because we can't just let it sit around. So we got a free motor to do something with. And on top of that, th this thing's going to be crazy fast with the 383 in it. So I'm stoked to do all that. I kind of want to let you guys know what was going on. I know a few people were asking and I had some people on Instagram kind of wondering what we were doing with the motor. And because I said we were supposed to get it and the shop got delayed, COVID crap. You guys all know how that's been going and it is what it is. So you can't do anything about it. But yeah, we finally got it. Everything's on route now this Saturday. 100% she will be out of the car. I'm obviously going to be filming all that too. And yeah, just as we go, we're going to be showing you stuff that we're doing. So we're going to be painting the firewall, getting the accessories pretty, making the engine bay as clean as we possibly can before we throw in the new motor. And once that's done, I'm trying to get a good timeline here. I know I'm always behind when I say it, so I don't even want to give an estimate. But if I had to, I'd like to say maybe a month from now, we'll be able to start and drive her. That'd be a cool goal. Cause we're also not working on it every single day. So that's the plan. I'm gonna be having a really good family friend come over. He's a master mechanic as well. So it's just gonna be fun, the usual thing. So stay tuned for that. We got the K20 over here sitting pretty. We've been driving her a lot. Tahoe sitting pretty. Just got the 2500 smogged and it passed perfectly. So that's great. But before I get sidetracked on all the other builds, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching. Enjoy these videos coming up because it's going to be really fun. If you haven't ever taken a motor out before or want to learn, this is a great time to learn because it's really basic. Small block Chevy stuff, carbureted engines. It's pretty much as simple as it gets when it comes to, to motor swaps and all that. So stay tuned. I'm excited and we'll catch you on the next video. Peace.